hello, hello. Welcome back. I am going a few minutes early because I have a pre-recorded interview with Rick Patri. I think it's Patri of Monster Bass. It's kind of long. To be honest, it was close to an hour and ten. Oh my gosh, how did you get that already? Donald, I owe you the I owe you the, the sunglasses. Yes, it is Klingon. How is that possible? Okay, Donald, I have a pair of Costa sunglasses over there. They're the new, um, what are they called? Uh, what is it? Diego sunglasses. Holy shmikes, that was awful fast. Anyway, um, I'm going to a little live because I have Monster Bass Rick to start off with. After Rick, I'm going to go to a live interview with uh, Charlie with JR Custom uh, Lures. So we're going to talk to him and then we'll talk to Mike, I think, afterwards. I should mention today's whiteboard is presented and sponsored by, do you see it? Hammer Tech Marine. If you aren't a fan of Hammer Tech Marine, go do that. That is Hammer's um, business. He has this great CNC machine business that he does. So uh, I thought uh, I thought I'd give him a plug. So Donald, you'll have to... Send me a message on Facebook with your address, and I'll send you. It's it's a br a brand new pair of Costa Diego sunglasses, and um, I don't know how you guys knew that so fast. I mean, did you, I want to know if somebody cheated? And that, that's it. I'm getting blown up on my phone. Um, I should mention news just came out about an hour ago that the Bassmaster 2021 Classic is going to be held in surprise, surprise. Texas. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but like six, seven months ago, uh, it was, we kind of, we kind of, we kind of announced that a little bit early. Not that it was, uh, not that it was, yeah, somebody got already, uh, not that it was official, but just now they made it official. So Ray Roberts, Texas, March 19th through the 21st. Um, <laughs> uh, well, we will be down there. I have to read that as a sponsor. Hammer Tech Marine is excited to announce that we will give you away Steve's whiteboard to one lucky subscriber. When the I can't give that, I don't think, in all honesty, Hammer, I would give that away. I actually, I have, I am, I am getting the 5,000. You can't see, I got four in there crankbaits for somebody. Um, that I'm going to give away at 5,000 plus a pair of sunglasses. Uh, and I don't think that thing's coming off the wall. I think I hammered it to the wall. I'm dead serious. Th that was something I've wanted for the longest time. And when I got this office, which I could, I wish I could show you everything that's in here. There's fishing pictures or paintings from original paintings from everybody. My dog is up here. Um, I got old lures over here and old reels and stuff like that over on this side. And my son and I were just going to be in here and he moved into the other room because he wanted a, a game room. So uh, anyway, uh, this room has now it has is now everything I want. I have a television over here that doesn't even, I have it hanging on the wall. It doesn't even work. Um, it was supposed to be so I could watch all the edits on a big screen, just make sure there wasn't any flaws in it when I do all these closer looks and stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, Ray Roberts, Bassmaster Classic. <laughs> no, I won't. Dis I'll try not to disappoint anybody. Uh, Ray Roberts, Bassmaster Classic, eight, uh, 2021. So, congratulations to Texas. But we did kind of tell you so like seven months ago, six months ago. I mean... I mean, I don't want to brag or anything or anyone say that we were spreading false rumors, but you want to know what? We said it was going to Texas and voila, it seemed to have went to Texas. Holy shmikes. Anyway, I'm going to start off this interview. Um, yeah, live long and prosper. I'm going to start this interview with uh, that I recorded yesterday with uh, Rick from Monster Bass. And uh, he offered to give us some, maybe a one, give us some stuff to uh, to give away. So we'll reach out to him later on, and maybe we'll do a giveaway next week of a Monster Bass month or subscription or something. I don't even know. 
don't sponsors get to define the term? Yes. <laughs> yes. If you And by the way, if you missed our first episode of Genesis of a Fishery, it is on the YouTube channel. It seriously, and it, it, the drone footage turned out fantastic. There's two, I, I, you'll see some more drone footage of um, some lures that I'm working with, but uh, turned out a lot better than I thought. And Jeff and I are going to start working on it. The bluegill are starting to come in. Mike has a great, Mike has a great uh, uh, thing to, to share. So we got Charlie uh, coming on after the interview with, it's kind of long, it's like 35, 34 minutes. But, uh, well, I, I guess, uh, but after that, we'll talk to Charlie with JR Custom Lures. And we have, Charlie and I are working on something for you, too, that I will not even start to mention because it's going to be that spectacular. And this guy is the real deal. This guy has energy, bounds of energy. He and his wife, Sherry, I've been watching their live things since, I, uh, since someone mentioned it to him. Oh, my gosh. Great show. Anyway. So we're giving away a 5K. Jeez, damn, you're killing me. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a quick commercial, and then I'm going to bring it back in, and you'll see uh, the interview with Rick, I think Patree, from Monster Bass. So hang on. We're going to do the sunglasses we just gave away, the Costa Diego's. Hold on. Okay, our next guest at live from the the casa is a good friend. I, I actually just met him. He is the the owner and CEO. I guess that's what we're gonna call you. Is sure. that sure? Okay, from Monster yeah. Bass, it's our boy or everyone's boy, Rick. <laughs> How are you, man? So, I'm doing great, man. It's uh. It's the Tuesday, you know, it's a long weekend that we just came off of, got to spend some time with the family, get recharged, and now we're back at it. How long, uh, how, how did you get, well, tell me first off, how did you get introduced into the outdoors? Yeah, so I used to run an agency. So I was in like technology and branding, and these guys showed up one day and they wanted to build a website for fishing reports. And they had like, a, you know, $200,000 to build a website, and they, they pitched me their idea, and I sat there and I was like, you want to build a fishing reports website and you want to charge people for the reports. And I thought to myself, okay, I don't know much about it. Let me do a quick Google search. And I found all these free fishing reports. And I was like, I don't know that your idea is really going to make much sense. But <laughs> so, and, and I'm a huge believer in karma. So I said, thank you for thinking of us. And I gave them the name of four other agencies. And I kept thinking about it because, you know, if you gave my brother one day left on this planet, He's going to grab his fishing pole and he's going to go fishing. He loves this stuff like way more than I do. And, uh, and I kept thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Then the Bassmaster Classic came up and it was down in New Orleans like however many years ago at Red River. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. was like, maybe I'll go to this thing. So I went there because I was just curious still. So I went and I'm sitting in the audience for the weigh-in. It was my very first weigh-in. I'll never forget. They had a ton of fog that weekend and uh, everything was delayed. And the guy got up and he's like, yeah, he goes, it was a rough day in the water. If it wasn't for whatever <laughs> system I was using, I wouldn't have been able to get there. And then the next guy gets up and all I'm doing is watching the crowd and every guy in the audience is like, baby, I got to get one of them things for Father's Day. You got to get me one. <laughs> and I'm literally like watching as the product marketing was, it was magical. Like, and every guy was like, I got to get me one of those. Mm -hmm. So I start. I kept thinking about, all right, maybe there's more to this. And I had this idea for, you know, Birchbox, which, you know, sells makeup and facial products for, for women. I was like, what if we did this in fishing? And this was literally like six months before like mystery and tackle grab back in the day. And I was like, nah, I don't know. And so I sat on the idea. And then lo and behold, I see that these two companies come out. I'm like, oh, Rick, you had a good idea. 
And so I went back to these guys and I said, listen, I got an idea. If you want to fund it, I'll build it. And that's literally how it started. And next thing you know, Lucky Tackle Box was born. That's unbelievable. Now, you left Lucky Lucky Tackle Box to start what I consider probably the industry standard of the top mark with Monster Bass. How hard was that transition? And and if was, I mean, what were your thoughts when you made that transition to start Monster Bass? Yeah, you know, I never really planned to start Monster Bass. You know, I think, you know, if if the cards had played out the way that they would have, I'd still be running Lucky Tackle Box. Mm-hmm. But they came to me and, you know, the the owner, the funder, he wanted to – he asked me for my plan and I told him the plan and he wanted to go in a different direction. And so we parted ways. No harm, no foul. That's how it happened. Mm-hmm. They were wa- – we were watching at the time Mystery Tackle Box was coming out with, you know, their 12 or 13 or however many brands that they just created. Yeah. And we all know that if you just go to China and say, hey, give me this, whatever this bait is, yeah, you can get it for 70 cents instead of buying it from a brand that's established and paying double or triple. And, 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 and so he wanted to go down that path and copy mystery. And I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it because we're just literally popping out boxes with overinflated MSRPs and products that literally have never been tested. I couldn't tell you the hooks that were on it. I couldn't tell you if they were going to run true out of the box. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, I wasn't the face of that company, but I ran everything and I just couldn't, I felt like we were ripping off the consumer. And so we left and, and, you know, I sat back for, you know, in my backyard, like, all right, what am I going to do now? Because mm-hmm. I've been at Lucky Tackle Box for five years, and 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 I just kept thinking, could you do it better? You know, or mystery and mystery and, and Lucky have proven this model, but is there a better way to do it? And I started thinking about like, you know, in 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 Florida, right? You can't send you, I can't send you a deep diving crankbait. Yes, you can't. I I've, awesome. I've told you this. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and, and and the guy in Michigan is at a different stage of the spawn than the guy in Texas. Yeah. So and so I said, well, what country and regions wouldn't be perfect because it's impossible to be perfect. It's impossible to put together a box that everybody's going to like. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, I put together that Strike King uh, takeover and I had people that commented that they hated the box. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I mean, if you, if you don't like that box, you should never buy a box again no. because I don't think it could have gotten much better. So I thought, like, let's regionalize the country and do our very best to give you base that are applicable to the places you love to fish and for the time of year. And let's do it with really well-known brands and let's incorporate some of these up and coming regional players that normally would never get this kind of platform Mm -hmm. to expose their brand to other people because you know little companies like whatever super k jigs or or whatever they don't have the money for marketing and outside of just their little geographic area you know they'll they'll never be able to reach it so I, i felt like for the general consumer let's let's I want to give them the right baits. I want to give them the education so that they can go out and catch more fish and hopefully crush their PB. I mean, that's what it should be all about. Yeah. How hard is it to put together that box for every region? I mean, how many pro people do you have? Like, just take for Florida, for example. How many people inside of or the or the south region are yeah. giving you, like, input on what what's working? How does that process work? Yeah, so we use a we use a, an application called Slack internally, and, and think of it as like a giant chat room yeah. for different areas of your business. So I have one for finance, one for marketing, and one for bait selection. And I probably have somewhere between 25 and 40, 40 people in that specific channel, and all we talk about are baits, colors. You, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best to make sure that we send you the right baits and the, and, and, and the right colors for the season. And then usually the biggest challenge is when a, I'll just use a, you know, a supplier of the, you know, let's just use strike King since we mentioned them first. Yeah. Strike King says your order is going to be delivered or your order is going to be late. Then I'm like, Oh crap, what do we do? Cause yeah. not everybody's going to have just whatever, 20,000 yeah. meters diving crankbaits laying around so then it's like okay what could we find that that 
should we substitute a different color that may not make the most sense? Like, you know, a couple months ago we had this problem and we sent a shad pattern to the Northeast and I got crushed for it because I sent the, because, you know, I didn't send them the perch pattern and, and I get it. But like sometimes it, it becomes really difficult because there's so many factors that come into play and, and they have, and, and the other challenge is when I'm dealing with striking, they're not making money on the sale of the baits to me. Yeah. I'm buying them at their cost. They're getting the marketing value. So if it comes down to Dick's Sporting Goods, who's a paying customer and paying three or four times the price that I'm paying for them, you know, Dick's is going to get them before me. And I totally understand that. So the challenge does become when the numbers get as big as they're getting for us, mm -hmm. it's finding the right baits from the brands that understand the value of this and getting them at the time that you need them and then being able to pivot really quickly when all of a sudden uh, a, a ship that's coming across from wherever it's coming from is going to be two weeks late or COVID-19 happens and yeah. now everything is held for 14 days. Yeah. Well, how, how has COVID-19 affected uh, getting the baits that you wanted? I would, I would imagine, and this might be a question before you mm -hmm. say this one, how far ahead are you working ahead? Like we're in May yeah. and I should say uh, one of the great things you guys do, I, I, there's going to be, I, I'm going to put four boxes up against each other soon. And yeah. uh, one of the things I like about what y'all do even more than the putting the box together is your guys' customer service is ridiculous for you to call me the, that time that I lost my box was ridiculous. I almost was, I was in shock. I'm like, yeah. This dude is the owner. He's calling me. But how far, how far ahead are you guys planning these boxes? And then how did COVID nineteen affect all of that too? Sure, that's a two part question. Yeah, sorry. It's pre COVID and post COVID. So pre COVID, I was probably ordering. What are we? We're, we're at the beginning of June. I was probably planning the August box because. The August box ships at August 1st. I got to have it at the warehouse at July 1st, mm -hmm. 30 days in advance, because they're going to start kidding. The box. But I have two weeks, I know something's going to happen. Someone's going to, a real real example, our good friends at Daiichi have experienced some 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 family pain. Yeah. Recently. Some, you know, the, the owner's passed away. Yeah. And, Less, and we were uh, talking Less. with him and. Yeah, yeah, and when he passed away, our orders, you know, and rightfully so, they got family things to deal with. Our orders were delayed, and we had to pivot and find something else. Mm -hmm. So I need that cushion in there of 15 days. So we're planning. So if it's June 1st now, we're planning for August, and knowing I got to get it there, you know, 30 days in advance with a two-week cushion. That was pre-COVID. Post-COVID, everybody fishes. Yeah. Forbes has put out articles. There have been articles. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ross at Mystery posted something recently from one of his VCs about how the winners in all of this are the online retailers and mm -hmm. subscription box companies. Yeah. We, we and literally, what are we in? Let's just call it 90. I don't know how long we've been quarantined now. It seems like forever. We are literally bigger now than we were in the heyday of Lucky Tackle Box. That's and awesome. And it happened in the matter of three months. And what that's forced us to do, it's been pretty painful. Like we're, I'm working like 18 hours, or, you know, I'm like working like 80 hour weeks because what's happening is, you know, you're planning ahead to get all these baits. Yeah. Because not everybody, no, most people don't have just an extra five, 10,000, you know, whatever crankbaits laying around. And, and if they do, now COVID's come along. They can't get their supply from wherever they're getting it from. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to get rid of the baits that they do have because they're not sure when they're going to get it next. And so instead of like every region having one or two versions, I might have a region that's got six or seven versions of the box. And I'll be honest, you know, instead of what I think is an A+, plus, sometimes a B goes out the door because I just can't, you know, I, I'm waiting on Strike King right now that just can't give me any more Thunder Crickets because they're waiting on their order too. Mm -hmm. It's affecting everyone from the small players to the big players. And 
And so it's been a challenge. So right now, and again, with the seasonal aspect of it, it's really hard for me to say, go to Alex Rudd and say, Alex, all right, what are you throwing in September? Well, what are the conditions, right? And, and, and so it's hard to say, but so we're now buying what I would consider to be staple shape, sizes, colors, and I'm going to have them laying around so that, you know, when I'm thinking about the August box, I'm looking at my yard sale saying, okay, I've got these Strike Kings, these Lunker Hunts, these Rapalas, these these would be really great colors and shapes because my team has told me so. Mm -hmm. This is what I have to play with and this is what I have to go purchase. So it's forced us to change the way that we, we buy and I've got to have way more, way more inventory in-house. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. Well, it's great to hear that you're you guys are expanding. I remember yeah. when it must have been Gary, was it Gary Abernathy that was working with mm -hmm. you to market? So Gary talked to me when you guys first started. Right. And he's like, uh, we're gonna you, you gotta check out this. What yeah. you know, you've done you, you know, I was just starting the YouTube channel a little bit, but I mm. remember the first box you guys gave me and I thought, Holy shit, if they yeah. can keep this up, this yeah. is this is unbelievable. When you went back from previous stuff and then you started this new company, you've you've mentioned it a couple of times, uh, not knocking off somebody's lures. How how hard is it to not go out and just go, you know what, this lure, uh, I don't have it with me. Just, let's just say yeah, I, have sure. a, I have one of the new Patrick Sabia lures. Okay. I probably shouldn't show up, but tough, <laughs> tough luck. Yeah. So let's just say you had this and you go, I can go to China and, and get this reproduced and make a little bit more money, even though I'm I'm taking away from possibly working with this co with that company in the future. How hard is that process? Um, I don't look at it as it's too hard for me to work with that company in the future. I think if if I were, you know, I make a line of monster bass baits, and in the years time, there's only been three. Yeah, I think you've. I've only gotten one. Yeah, because it takes a lot of effort to make good baits. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, I could just go buy, hey, call Factory X and be like, give me a jerk bait, and I could have you a jerk bait in thirty days, mm -hmm. right? But am I creating? What kind of experience are you giving to the customer? You know, oddly enough, I uh, I've taken a shortcut once because. I had a factory that came to me, the factory that I deal with for, for my baits, and he said that, you know, hey, this company went out of business, and they have, they, they're selling all their molds, would you like, you know, and I said, well, let me look at it. I said, you know, if you guys have done testing, so they made me samples, sent them to me. I loved them. They were amazing. I sent them to a bunch of the people on my team. Loved them. They're amazing. And, and, uh... I posted it one time. I'm like, who would like to see a bait like this in the box? And one guy reached out to me and he goes, Rick, that's a knockoff. I'm like, what are you talking about? And How he did goes, he know? He goes, this is a guy who's got an Instagram page who I can, you, you, I've had conversations with him before. He's really knowledgeable. And he goes, Rick, he goes, that's the a knockoff of a bait that uh, Mega, ba Mega Bass makes over in Japan, but they don't release it over here. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> I had purchased 8,000 units already. Oh. So I'm going to so, – so when I tell you like why don't I do that, because you can get into these – like unless you make them from the ground up, you have no idea what you're buying, right? Like there are – I've run across baits where it's the duo they, – they take the a mega bass bait and put the duo eye on it, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I'm not so concerned with like – duo not working with me because i've bought a bait and it's a knockoff like if i was intentionally doing that sure then they'd never work with me i don't want to do it because i think that's a cheap experience and you know it lessens your box it, 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 yeah it waters down my brand and it and, and it makes what we're trying to do like such i don't know just garbage like Sure, I, could I make more money? Oh my god, I'd be printing money. I'd be living large. Literally, if I took the approach of my, if I took the approach of my former company, I cannot tell you what my life would be like right now. There's, I would champagne dreams and caviar wishes. There's like, something to be said to, for having that 
integrity and that honesty that you yeah. that you wouldn't do that. I think that's one of the problems with a lot of the a lot of your competition. That's what puts your box above all the uh, well, I mean honestly, there's two boxes that I love. I love yours and I'll be honest, I love the Florida Tackle Club box, but they make it specifically for me. Sure, that's perfect. It's a perfect little niche for just Florida and I could net right they're always they're more the more focused you are, the better they can the better that they can deliver. Yeah. They're always going to provide you with a quality box because hey, it's not for the guy in Texas, it's specific for the guy in Florida. Oh, it's no, it's specific for me only. Oh, it's really? built designed for oh, nice. me. So oh, nice. but exclude that. Yeah. When I look at all the Monster Bass is so far ahead of everybody else. I like that you there's some things that you guys do right. You put the quality products in to start off with. Yeah. You don't give us half packs. Thank God for not doing that. Thank yeah. you, God, and you guys for not doing that. I yeah. hate that. I hate getting a pack and it has two plastics in it. I don't understand it. I yeah. think it lessens it. I think you guys have arguably the best customer service. Uh, hands down. Like I'm so proud of our customer service. Katie does an amazing job of running the team. Yeah. And and she was she, she was the most important hire because – the one thing at the one thing at my previous employer yeah. that we weren't really good at, and I don't know if it was because of the way we scaled the company. It's it's hard for me to look back and and try and figure out why, but I just knew that. Do you know Zappos? Yeah. All right, Zappos to me had the best customer service. They like all their job was to to do was to make me happy, and and I loved doing business with them because it was easy. And if there was a problem, they fixed it. And I always said if I if I could do this again, I wanted customer service that would fix problems the way that I would expect my own problem solved. Mm -hmm. Right? We're we're not going to ever be problem free, but we're going to do our best to fix it and make it right. It yeah. may not yeah. be always to exactly the way that you want it. Like if your box gets lost, I'm gonna or or we, it, it's it's missing in transit. I'm gonna make you wait a couple days because sometimes it just there's a hiccup in. FedEx or UPS and two days later it shows up. But if it doesn't show up a week later, okay, then I'm going to ship you another box. Yeah. You know what I mean? I also <laughs> like one of the things you did, and you've made it clear, and I even put it on uh, this last box. Someone said, I don't get my box till later in the month. And I said to him, look, I don't know for real if this is real life, but Rick says if you want an earlier box, you can co contact their customer support and they'll put you on the <laughs> first, like, I think you send mine out on the Second day of the month, I think that's what mine is. Like, yeah. yeah, so you can do that. This guy put it on Facebook that you did you did do it. He said, yeah. "Thank you for the the heads up. They're putting mine in the first, and that's yeah. that's another great thing." Yeah, one of the things I that always that always because this this came up later in the evolution of the company. You know, Lucky Tackle Box and Mystery Tackle Box very very you know very similar. Sign up. Your first box ships right away, and then every month we ship it on the 10th. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking to myself, well, I don't want to get my first box and then ship on the 10th because in some cases I could wait 40, 50 days for my second box. Mm -hmm. and, and so I said, how about we just have your renewal date be whatever date you signed up. So if you signed up on the 14th of the month, we'd ship your box. You'd renew on the 14th. We'd ship it on the 14th every single month. But if you want it sooner, just let us know and we'll change the date. Yeah. And that way, the at least it was every 30 days. Yeah. And listen, I mean, if I could move everyone up sooner, that would be great because obviously I, you know, I ship them all out in the beginning of the month. They get anxious. They want more. They go buy more. I mean, you know. Now here, so. now here's a question. Uh, yeah. Now the the Strike King box. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like that was a stupid box. That was really a stupid box. What you did that one, then you did Jason Christie. Who mm -hmm. came up with these ideas on doing these like like a one company or one person boxes? Whose idea whose amazing idea was this? Okay, so thank you. Um the the benefit that I have when starting Monster Bass was that I had five or whatever years of experience at Lucky Tackle Box. And I knew I knew what the trends were in buying patterns based upon seasonality, right? Mm -hmm. I know when 
fishing sort of starts to wind down and hunting begins and and you know what happens when the when it starts to ice over and i always knew that like you know at lucky december january and february are traditionally tough months Mm -hmm. you're still going to get the seasonal buying but you're going to get a lot of cancellations from people that were there you know previously they're like ah you know if i've had it for six months if there's a time to cancel i'll cancel for three months pick it back up so i said to myself what could I do to make these boxes special to avoid subscription fatigue and to get people to stay on during the months when they can't fish? Because, you know, the guy in Michigan, you know, I sell a regional box, but what am I sending to the guy in Michigan in the middle of January, right? Yeah. Nothing. So let me make these boxes special. So that's when I came up with let's let's find every let's find the baits that were released at iCast. Let's make December the iCast box. Let's go to my my good friends at Strike King who I'm, I'm very grateful for. Let's have them put together a Strike King takeover. And then I said, who else could we do? Because, you know, there's very few companies that cover all the bases to take over a box. Like, y- you know, Z-Man could do it, but you're still missing like a crankbait. Like, it'd be, I think Z-Man would have a tough time doing it. But even though we talked about it, then there's the pure fishings of the world and the Pradco's. And so, you know, uh, Bruce Stanton, who's been in the industry for a, a million years and so helpful for us, he uh, he works at Pragco, and we went to him and we said, you know, why don't we, ju- judging from the success of this Strike King box, you couldn't help but, I mean, get amazing brand awareness if we put together a box. So why don't we take Jason Christie, mm-hmm. let's do a Jason Christie box, and let's let him do make a video on each bait in the box. Let's talk about why he, you know, what are his favorites? and um, And so we did that. And, and it was really successful. People really loved it. Really uh, loved it. To the point where we're going to do, we're going to do two more themes and that's probably about it. So we're actually going to have a, 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 in July, uh, Lunker Hunt is taking over the box. Okay. Um, I, I really love the management team at Lunker Hunt. Very nice. Great to do business with. Um, I think they create baits that are amazing and catch, you know, they catch fish, they catch fishermen. They, they, they've, it's well thought out. Um, and then we're going to do a top water box. Now, speaking of that, COVID-19 screwed it all up because uh. my June box was supposed to be my top water box. Couldn't do it because all sorts of shipping delays. I've had to move it out to like August, which again, for my top water. you know, I got to juggle it however it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, originally my whole idea of the takeover box was to make it the winter time when the guys in Michigan, like, cause again, my value proposition is baits for the places you love to fish during the season you're fishing. And how can I do that? Yeah. In, in January ice. and February. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's a, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Okay. Last a couple, a couple quick yeah. ones. I saw recently yeah. you had, you were looking for new pro staff. Is this, was I, was I, did maybe I get a wrong email? I mean, are you, no. are you guys actively looking for new people to bring in to that have some social media influence and other stuff? And if so, how, how does one get involved that might, that would love to do that? Yeah. So that's a great question. So yeah, we are. Um, so my, my, I hate the term pro staff because it's yeah. such an overused term and you know, there are companies out there like that have 30, 40,000 people on their pro staff. And it's yeah. just a, to me, it's just a scam that says, hey, you wanna be on the pro staff? Great, you guys spend 300 bucks a year. Yeah. Do the math, 300, you know. And so, um, yeah, we're looking, my pro staff looks at a, a couple different ways. So I've got my, my brand ambassadors or the guys that are in the Slack channel talking about baits, mm-hmm. you know, and there's like 40 of them. Those are my key 40 people that, they have my cell phone number. They can call me at home. They need anything. I'm going to give it to them. Um, they're integral to the success of the company. Yeah. They make video content showing you how to use the baits. Um, and then I have my pro staff, which are more of, you know, I'd like to represent your brand and your company. And so in the footer of my website, there's a pro staff application. You can fill it out. Um, provide just some details. I'm not looking for the guys with the biggest – you know, the biggest, uh, subscriber counts, yeah. you know, I've got a little kid named Dylan who's like 12 years old. 
he said he wanted to be on my pro staff. And I said, all right, what are you going to do? And we talked about it. And, and uh, I said, go shoot me a video. Take any bait in your box and shoot me a video. It was the worst video ever. But you know what? That kid tried. Yeah. And, and I, I gave him feedback. And he's like, all right. He goes, I'm going to go shoot it again. I'm like, all right. I give him feedback every time. And he's going to get – and his videos just keep getting better and better and better. And you know what? If, if a kid like that wants to be on the pro staff – and he's willing to try and do a great job. You know what? Maybe he becomes the next Andrew Flair. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Listen, I had true story. Uh, Lunkers TV had six thousand subscribers, and I picked him up. I called him up one day and said, "Hey, yeah, I like your videos." I don't remember how it went because he's a totally different human as yeah. than he was. And and I said, "I'd love to like send you a box and and you know work with you." He's like, all right. And, and, you know, sure enough, today's who he is. And, yeah. and so, like even little, little Andrew Flair or, or, or Ben, oh my God, Ben Milliken had like 1200. Yeah. At the time. He was so small. Yeah. And I worked with those guys. So who knows? Maybe this kid is the next one. So I'll work with people of every size at the end of the day. What can I do for you and what can you do for me? And are you going to respect my brand the way that I do? Because yeah. I love my brand and, and I hold it very near and dear. Yeah. Well, you guys just got to keep doing what you're doing, man. Honestly, I think you guys are the you're the benchmark of what everyone should be striving to be, except there's way too many that don't even reach your waist. Um, yeah, and it's tough because, you know, in the day and age where someone, you know, takes someone takes this box and someone takes this box and they do the math. And they say, well, you know, this box is worth 40 and this box is worth 35. So the 41 and, and you know, and the one that was 40 is full of not, not you know, just garbage baits with made up MSRPs. And, you know, or, you know, this box costs 40 bucks and this one costs 35. And you're trying to do a side by side comparison. The average Joe isn't thinking about it. The average Joe just is like, oh, well. 40 bucks worth of baits. Well, yeah, but it also costs like $6 or five bucks more. If I put five, if you give me five bucks, I could buy three hard baits yeah. from well known brands and put them in the box, and the box would be amazing. So it, it's, uh, it is, it is, it is tough to, to constantly, you know, strive to put out the best quality boxes that we can and not pay very hard not to pay attention because. You can get caught up in it, and, and 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 instead of like just drinking your own Kool Aid and focusing on <laughs> making it the very best, you guys are doing a good job. You know that. I hope you know that. Uh, there's there's a lot of them that are that are really crap, and that kind of hurts you at the same exactly. time because unfortunately, if you go buy that crap box, right. then All they're boxes not. There, yeah, from then on, you have to rebuild that person's confidence. I have to say, I had Monster Bass and Lucky Lucky Tackle Box for years. Yeah. I got yours, got rid of Lucky, uh, yeah. got rid of Mystery, mm -hmm. uh, talked to Ross at Mystery because he had at, at ICAST last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't, I still get yours every month, uh, and I pick and choose some ones here and there to get more content but overall you guys have yeah. the best box on the market it is called a better box for a reason thank you i mean listen i tell you the same as i tell anyone else on the planet i'm never gonna send you a hundred percent of the boxes i send you you're never gonna love them all mm -hmm. there's gonna be ones that you like better than others or you're gonna be like i don't know about this bait or that bait but I can tell you that our intention is to try and put out the best boxes that we can. And, you know, there are some where I put them out before they've even gone out the door. I was super nervous. Like I was nervous about the Jason Christie box, a, because it followed striking and it didn't matter what followed the it, strike. You're right. Box. It was never going to be as good. It right? ne that striking box set yeah. another level where right. I, anyone that bitched about that one really yeah. probably should have their head checked. Sure. And, and you know, when, when, when he said, like, these are the baits that I love, and he named a Cotton Cordell bait, and I said, 
you know, I've never put Cotton Cordell in the box because I'm nervous that people are going to think Walmart. And, oh. and I was really, re- I, I said, like, really? Like, you're t- are you telling me that these, this is really one of your favorite baits? He goes, Rick, he goes, when I'm having the worst day ever, he goes, I grab that Cotton Cordell Big O and that's what I throw. I'm like, really? I'm like, all right, if you're telling me that, and this isn't like the marketing guy telling me, mm-hmm. right? Because if marketing's telling me, I'm thinking, all right, this is overstock, and you're trying to sell me a bunch of stuff. No, he's sitting here telling me, I love this bait. Okay, but I was still nervous. I was nervous the entire month that someone was going to start calling at Walmart because I was putting Cotton Cordell in. No, no. How yeah. you said you mentioned something? How hard yeah. is it to not get all of some one company's overstock stuff that? Maybe he's even buyback stuff. How hard is it to not go, well, you want to know, this is a great lure, great company, yeah. but obviously it didn't do well when it came out. How hard is it to, to deal with that? Uh, it's more hard to determine what is that, what falls uh. into that category because I don't know. They don't tell me. I'll give you, you know, there is a brand right now that sells, a, I think it's like a 12 or $14 bait. Great brand great product they're going through a packaging redesign so on tackle warehouse these baits are seven bucks yeah and there's they're not changing anything but the packaging yeah but if i put that in the box and they see close out yeah they're gonna think that it's overstock and discontinue when the reality is they're just changing out the packaging so i'll never so unless i actually did dive in and dig deep I, I, I won't really know. A good a good example is I was – there was a bait that we wanted to put in the box and I asked the team about it and some guy goes, yeah, I just bought a whack load of those at Shields or I don't know, some, some store that you know I don't have in my area because it's not a national chain. And he's like, yeah, they're all on sale for five bucks in the bargain bin. I'm like, all right, but every online retailer has them for you know nine bucks. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really hard. Because everybody, because there's so many factors that go into it. I can only try and do my best, and then hope like that I didn't buy twenty thousand, and then the next day they're gonna put them on sale, right? Like I can ask those questions, but it's it's impossible for me to truly know. And really, when I think about it, now that I th- now that you said that, really, I what can be uh, close out for one place for might sure. not be close out for me down here. A hundred percent. And that's what makes it hard. You know, I'm trying to put the same. So we make the boxes regional, but try to work with, let's just say, the same six brands that month because, you know, six times eight, 48. If I work with 48 different brands, I'd lose my mind. So, mm-hmm. but if I can work with six brands and get a box for each or a bait for each box from that brand, it kind of compartmentalizes the conversations I need to have. But you're right. Like, like, what's on sale in New York is not that. What's on sale in the West and what's on Overstock and again because of the seasons, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm coming out of the winter and I'm now deep in the in the heart of summer, all the jerk baits are probably on sale, and yeah. now yeah. frogs are like like so. Every region works at a different uh, cycle, which makes it really really hard. I, I've never thought that it could be so, uh, in talking to you, how hard it could be to do this. I, I've just thought, you know what, you, you go to, I go I to my buddies, I'm going to order 10,000 of these baits, I'm shoving one in each one, yeah. and now uh-huh. I'm starting to think, holy crap. Uh, yeah. There's and a- what makes it, yeah, and what makes it harder is, is think about this conversation. I go to you, you own, you're the owner of Live Target. I'm just, again, using them as a brand. Yeah. And they can either give me, 10,000 live targets at their cost. They don't make any money, but it goes in the box and 10,000 people have now picked it up, touched it. I've told them what's different about it. They've held it. They've tied it on their hand, on their rod and hopefully they catch it. And if they catch it, okay, maybe I'll spend that premium dollar that live target charges. Or I sell those 10,000 units to Bass Pro Shops Make five bucks a unit or whatever it is, that's fifty thousand bucks. So either I make no money or I make fifty thousand dollars. Right? That's a struggle like yeah. that, that every brand has to, so but when a brand like Stripe King looks at it and says, 
Uh-huh. We get it. That's why Strike King is such a like David Mayer Strike King is such a huge supporter and so, he's such a smart marketing mind. He gets it, right? Because when you think about that box, if you think that there were let's just use 10,000. That's 10,000 people that were posting everywhere Strike King. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot of, of, of brand recognition. That's a lot of people talking about Strike King, and it cost them nothing. I know. I, I don't know if you saw it. I talked to Jason down in Okeechobee, uh, like, uh, I don't know if it was one of the practice days or one of his off days. Okay. And I asked him, I said, you know, what was what was the thought process? He said, he told me what, it went through the whole thing, did the little interview, ended, I said, so what's the response been? And he was like, I've never been tagged more in my life. Oh, it's it's actually in the video. Yeah. I've never been tagged more in my life than doing the Monster Bass takeover right. than in anything I've ever done. And that says yeah. that says volumes about what you guys are putting out and the marketing that comes behind what you're doing. Yeah, and for a guy who's really not the – you know, there's guys that can fish and yeah. then there's guys that can fish and promote like, you know, Scott Martin, right? Yeah. Ultimate yeah. showman. Jason Christie's he can fish. He can he's fish. Not, you know, he's not the guy that wants to be out in the public. And, no. and he was like, Yeah, I saw him at the classic and he's like, Yeah, he goes, I gotta tell you what, for the for that thirty days, he goes, My phone blew up every single second. He goes, I'd have to turn it off because everybody mm-hmm. he goes, Your marketing or whatever it was you guys were doing, he goes, It worked. He goes, Because I tell you, I've never blown up so much. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, keep yeah. doing the the great job. I know you have a code. Usually it's like save ten, isn't it? Yeah. You yeah. can save ten dollars on the first one. Just put that in the uh, when you go when you go buy your box. You can yeah. do that and and keep doing what you guys are doing. You guys are doing fantastic. It's really yeah. fun to get your box every month. I'm I'm as someone who loves fishing. I mean, yes. it's not just the stupid radio show. It's not just doing these things now and the videos and all that stuff. I love fishing. I really look forward to seeing your box every month. Thank you, thank you, got- you. I'd love to. I'd love to give you. Some, you know, I'd love to give you a box or something to give away on one of your next shows or whatever you need. I'd love to. You know, sh- throw some love your way and give you something to give away to your listeners. Yeah, we'll figure that. I'll text. I'll email you in a, in a little bit. But everyone, go over to monsterbass.com. Use the code save ten. You'll get ten bucks off your first one. You're not going to be disappointed, especially the top water box. I cannot wait for. And really, quite honestly, nobody should ever bitch about that one because at any point in the time, you can catch fish on top water. There should be no complaining about that. And uh, and I look forward to seeing what you guys have coming up too because I know like I've had Jason Beck on here and a couple of your pro staffs too. I had Jason and I forgot his uh, his name too. Both of them, both of them were like, wait, you wait till you see what they got coming up. Uh, we can't tell you, but what Monster Bass has coming up is is phenomenal. So so thank you for that, and thank you for doing yeah. what you guys do. And we'll keep in touch. And, and sorry, I think it was my fault, by the way, at iCast. I think we were supposed to meet at iCast uh, last yeah. year. And I think it was my fault. I think uh, Rick said, uh, I, forget, I, I don't know if not, you're not, you, I'm saying your name. Uh, I know. What's his name from that used to do? <laughs> He said, "Well, you got to meet him at three o'clock." And I, and oh, I said, Gary. "Oh, Gary." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll meet you here at three o'clock." And then I think I got stuck no doing worries. an interview, so I apologize. But when, whenever we're nearby, we'll get together and and yeah. thank you for everything you guys do, man. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate you so much. Okay, cheers, everyone. Right, that was great. Rick. Everyone, that was Rick. Okay, I'm going to do a quick interview. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was Rick from Monster Bass. I'm going to do a quick interview, a quick break here. I'm going to put on the Tackle Webs commercial. While I'm doing that, I'm going to call our boy from JR Custom Lures and Baits. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I I really enjoyed doing that interview with Rick. To be honest, I'm really really looking forward to talking to Charlie. I've got. A lot of questions. If you have a question, you can put it on the chat thing. I'll try to post it on here and then ask the question too. But give me a little bit of time because it is kind of distracting. But let me do this this thing for Tackle Webs. The great guys at Tackle Webs. If you don't have a Tackle Web, you should be you should have them all over your boat, inside your hatches, everything. So let me do this, and at the same time, I'm gonna call Charlie. So hang on, here we go. 
This is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Can you hear me? Until one day, he found out about tackle webs. With tackle webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. Couldn't be more excited to talk to our next, our next gentleman. He's from JR Custom Lures. Charlie, Charlie, how are you, man? Can you hear me? You don't hear me. I I see and hear you. I don't know why you can't I, hear. I got you now, buddy. Oh, hey, how are you? Charlie from JR uh, Custom good. Lures. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? What's going on? I am doing well. You've already had questions. Do you have your sweet tea off camera? Uh, it's it's possible. <laughs> I, I could have a, a oh, uh, another. You never know. So, uh, It's nice to meet you. Thank you for doing this, by the way. Same to you. Same to you. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into the to the industry? Uh, tell me about JR Custom Lures. Tell, first, tell me how you started fishing. Maybe that's the best way to start. Uh, fishing started out at a young age with you know my dad and all. We grew up fishing uh, Lake Fork, all the area over there, East Texas area, a lot of good lakes. Um, that was kind of what originated the fishing. Uh, I remember fishing on the creeks with my grandfather with cane poles back in the day i mean that's just that's how we was raised up was fishing so um that kind of initiated the love of fishing i always had it um you you kind of i kind of lost it uh as as life went on and you know you get busy you don't have time for it as much and i got away from it um i didn't fish near as much i lost my dad in, in 17 january 2017 um and upon that I decided, hey, you know, we need to continue the tradition. You know, I kind of let it die. Um, I brought in my son, and we took over my dad's boat fishing. There was nothing in the beginning of this to really go anywhere other than to put my son in a boat. We're going to fish for my dad, put his name on, on the boat, you know, that kind of deal. And, well, one thing led to another. At a young age, young people will lose really expensive lures. And it gets <laughs> twice, right? So... Uh, the area we fish out here is really bad, and you lose a lot. So, you know, we got to figure out a way to, to beat the problem here. So we started making our own baits. And at the time, we'd buy square bills, you know, something simple, paint up a couple. Um, and one thing led to another. You know, we ended up painting baits on a roll-around tool cart. Um, that led into building a, a setup in the basement of a wooden bench and painting baits down there. And here we are three, a little over three years later, and uh, it's, it's fun. Now you don't. It's a blast. It, it was not intended to go this direction. It, well, obviously you you must have had some success, or the fish, the lures caught fish probably helped too. But how, when you start when you started the JR Custom Lures, was it just making hard baits like crank baits, or was it I'm going to do soft plastics and both? When did was it both um, at one time or? No, uh, the the original deal was just making hard baits. I mean that was kind of our deal. We did a lot of airbrushing on hard baits. I uh, brought my wife in painting. Uh, she's she's the push and the backbone behind where we are and how we got here. Mm -hmm. um, she really gave the, hey, you need to go further with this and, and really chase it. I uh, brought my son in, got him to painting. I mean, if we're going to do it, let's all do it. You know, let's get involved. Being that it was for my dad, it really put the, you know, the push behind everybody. And it, it really got us going. So that, that was a, a, a cool start. The, the people around us, the you know, we started out with 30 or 40 people watching. Yeah. Here and there. when we And I would pre-record and upload to YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And, uh, you know, you start out that small. You see these people that get behind you and back you. Um, a, the baits are great. I'm not going to lie. But they followed a story. They took, they took what we was pushing as a story and helped us build where we're at. And mm -hmm. that truly meant 
you know, is worthy of following this, worthy of keep chasing this, what we is not necessarily my dream, but what turned into my dream. You know, they built the road for me to go down. And that's what's, you know, been kind of really cool behind all of this. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's great that it's a family company. When, when, when you start, like, how, how hard is it to make a mold? Let's just say, you, you you have an idea for a, a different type of worm, and you're like, okay, I I I I want to create it. How many? How long is that process from start to when you're producing something for people to purchase? We let's just put it this way: we've been in this now for a little over three years. I have personally successfully built three molds <laughs> that produce fish. Okay, now the ideas that have came through up here are endless. Yeah. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie. You in the shower, and the idea hits your head. You're gonna come up with it, right? And you'll try to create it. Um, we have had that, and we've had to build molds, um, kick the baits out. Let's see what they do. You know, granted, we have an awesome pro staff that they tell us the facts. You know, our, our customers are amazing. They do the same, but sometimes uh, we really need that factual information whether this really works or whether you just like it. Um, so we've built a lot, and sometimes the process is uh, quite. Um, in depth on how long you go to get that mold to a final stage. So you're getting lots of people love the sunset picks, Charlie. That you take? Are you a sunset fan? Well, they like. I got a crew on here that likes to give me a hard time. Oh, I don't necessarily get to fish as well and as often as they do. So I do a lot of sunset picks. Okay. Uh, my time frame for fishing is not as well as theirs. We'll I, say that. I I like when people take pictures of sunset and their feet are in the picture. And you're thinking, well, what, what the hell is? Why are your feet kicked up? You might are you have an adult beverage next to you, but why are your feet kicked up? You're not fishing. I'm gonna have to work on that. A, that could be an interesting <laughs> twist on my sunset pick and really change the whole game plan. Up there. Start adding those. I'm I'm sure all yes. these people will love it. Um, yes. so you buy? Do you make the the crank baits and what type of crank baits do you have? I know you make top water baits, uh, but you also make crank baits. Tell tell me a little we, bit about. I mean, just to, for instance, here's, uh, I don't know what we can see and can't see, but you can. these are just regular square bills. So, like, we buy these already molded, already ready to go, and we paint them. Uh, and I, I'm going to follow off what Rick said. He was on here earlier. It's about quality. And, yes. And we don't just take the first bait you find, cheapest bait you find. you got to put quality into what you're producing. So we go after a quality blank. We try a few, and that's what we end up using. But we do anything from top water to divers. And all in between on the hard bait side. Uh, anything hard bait we have is something that's already pre-molded, pre-made. All we're doing is putting the paint job on it, putting your secure coat around it to cover it, putting your hooks on it, sending you down the road. Now, I obviously, you probably use what kind of hooks do you put in the, the, the crank bait? So you use a good hook? No, we use a KVD hook. Oh, yeah, um, the, the triple I mean, triple grip, whatever it's called? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know what you can see there. That, that's our go-to hook. Um, and... That thing hooks up on anything. If if you've never stuck one of those in your finger, just go home and try one. <laughs> They'll go deep, and they won't hold any mercy on you. I mean, they're dang good hooks. I love them. So. Uh, now, you guys completely custom paint them yourself. How long does that process take? Oh, uh, let's just say if, if we start painting X amount of baits, um, it, you, you can usually paint them within an hour or less, you okay. know, depending on how many you're painting. Now, that's just the starting stage of this. Then you have it and you go clear. Now, we personally clear ours, and most of them are in a KBS clear. Um, it's kind of like automotive clear of sorts. Um, really puts a good coating on there. We also have some that my wife will glitter, and she uses a different kind of coating on those. Um, that process takes a good 24 hours to cure. We don't like to ship unless it's set for 48 hours after clear. So mm -hmm. a, a bait could take you possibly three days, you know, per se. Um that's the general principle on them. And price range wise, I mean, how competitive are you with, uh, um, with, I mean, cause I've bought some, I have a couple custom lures up there to be honest. I got one. I wish I could give away, um, because it cost me an absolute arm and a leg and the guy is no longer, I don't want anything to do with the guy, but it was, it was 80 bucks. Yeah. It, that was our deal. When, when we, when we first started saying we're going to paint lures and, and, and produce it to the masses, we'll say, right. The deal was is I wanted a custom bait that the average dad with kids can afford to buy. Uh, that was the whole reason why we started this yeah. was because we wanted to save money. So 
say a typical square bill is going to run you 1025. That's 90% of all her hard baits are 1025. Mm -hmm. You get on into the, you know, the bigger top water baits and your big swim baits. Yeah. They go up in price. Um, but, but you're just what you sell is top water baits and divers, it's you know, and, and, that typically is a 1025 bait. Yeah, that's that's that and it's a quality product that you're putting out. Yes. The paint I've gotten people nonstop. Uh Andy Andy Becker says quality A1 perfection. Tommy says uh they're like uh, jewelry baits and he says hello to Miss Sherry and I should say hello to Miss Sherry too. Uh people are saying nonstop awkward Akron Angler says definitely high quality in the bait along with some crazy good patterns. He has them shipped all the way to Ohio and lots of other things. Ridge Ridge Runner Rods is saying their paint jobs are the best. You obviously put some yeah. effort and some some time into doing it. That's that's yeah. that's amazing. Uh, our crew and when I refer to crew, we have a pro staff, less than twenty people, mm -hmm. but our customers are also our crew. Um, we go to both aspects, our customers as well as our pro staff, to get ideas to, you know, what should we change, what do we need to look for. All these people are fishing way more than we are, and they have really good input. And that's, I think, the drive um, behind where we're going is we're following what these people are wanting, what these people are seeing on a daily basis. They run into a lot more often than we do, and that that's really been a great um, way that we've produced real quality baits is by listening to our crew. So. So now tell me about a little bit more about soft plastics. When, uh, oh. <laughs> how soft plastics was me and the wife discussed it. You know, do do we get into soft plastics? Do we not? You know, and here's the deal. It's it's like any big box store you go to. You can go in there and get anything you want in that store, one shop, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to be that, but I want to offer you more than a square bill. You know, so we said let's go ahead and do the soft plastic. So we've been in that now for, I don't know, two years, a little over two years, something like that. Um, we started buying plastic and trying to resell it, right? That was no good. And let me tell you why. The quality of some of the products you buy is not worthy of standing behind. And that was not what we wanted. And for us, we've seen that taking our name down, stepping us down from being custom. So we said, no, let's X that. Let's go ahead. Let's take the time. Let's buy the product and start making our own soft plastic. So we started out with a couple of molds, and I couldn't tell you how many molds we got now. We got a ton of molds, whether it be aluminum or open pore molds. Um, but I, I hooked up with Bait Plastics, um, I don't know, three years ago, mm -hmm. and really started using their plastic. I have used other brands, but this particular brand, not knocking anybody else, has always produced us quality baits. So. Yeah. I've stuck with them. I've worked with their plastic. I love it. Um, most of our people can speak for the bait plastic that we use. is amazing. It holds up. I mean, it's it's worthy of more than one or two bites on a, on a soft plastic worm, which you know how it is. You get that bag of baits that you get one bite and the tail's gone. It's no good. You yeah. Know? So don't want that. I had a question from Mark Tomlinson that says, out of everything JR Custom Lure makes, what's your absolute favorite bait to make? Oh man! Um, I, honestly, I'm going to say painting square bills. Uh, the only reason behind that was because that's what started us, and and that brings because when we go live, we do a lot of live shows. Yeah, we sometimes just go look, guys. We're going to paint this square bill. We're going to do something cool tonight. I have no idea what we're going to do, but we're going to start painting, and yeah. that's that brings a surprise. The the who knows what we're going to end up with aspect behind it and that's what's really fun yeah i i actually like i watched i've watched a couple of them i i texted or got with you or miss sherry said thomas and i my little boy watched the other day and we were like intrigued because i think one of the things we're seeing nowadays in the bait industry is that we're seeing people make worms or or you know tails and they're always dipping them in a different color yeah. and because you custom hand pour yours you're you were making them you could actually go well i like green on the body but i want a fluorescent yellow tail like the ones you have right next to you yeah they, these for instance i mean this is a, a craw that my wife pours um that's two color like that yeah it's custom made she hand pours those these are killer those are a big hot item this is a in-house built mold with a tail a different color it takes away the aspect of having to dip it um I hate to use this word, but I use it a lot because this is how I see our company when we produce a bait. I want to save you money. I know you have to buy my product 
but I want to save you money. I don't want you to have to go buy that dip in that tail. You've already yeah. paid for the bait. And that's the key behind any of this is you've got to save a nickel anytime you can or this is not going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. I also like that you were doing, you had like a, a, over the weekend uh, an American theme that I just thought was wonderful. Uh, yes. Especially, you know, and I, I also like that you're Amer you, the family's all there. I think it's awesome, the family. Yeah. I said this already. Family, yeah. but also that you're doing all this stuff here, not sending overseas and getting yeah. all that other crap done. You're you're doing it here and, and living it up. Now now yeah. how how often do you get to go fishing? I mean I mean I know you're uh, you're doing a ton of live videos. It's it's gonna be sad if I tell you. Um Uh oh. I, I would say it's probably been a month since I've been in my boat fishing. Now we've got a local spot we go to at a golf course to test a lot of our stuff. So we was actually there yesterday. Um but yes, I don't get to fish near as much. Um but I'm still doing what I love. You know, I'm still making something that's going to put fish in your boat. Yeah. Even though I can't go use it, I'm still doing it to produce fish. And that's great for us. We still get family time to go fishing, just not as often. So now I, 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 I don't know the answer to this. Do you, can you add a scent to your soft plastics too? Yes. We don't inject our plastic with a scent. The simple reason think about it is not great for it. it all right. So I'm going to take my baits. I'm going to build them. And I'm going to soak them in a scent when I put them in your bag. So we use the actual uh, portion of it is a garlic scent and a portion is a coffee scent. And it's a mix. Um, that scent had came about through one of our pro staff. Uh, again, I've used garlic forever. Garlic always works. Um, but nothing's better than your wife getting your package of baits you order from JR Custom Lures. <laughs> and it smells like garlic on the kitchen table, right? So we kind of tend to knock that down a little bit with the coffee. We make the wife happy, the fisherman's happy, and we're all good. They can keep buying, you know, so yeah. it works out. Uh, I had another question. Do you make a paddle tail in two to three to four inch range? Tell me some of the, the, the soft plastics and if you have a couple that you can show us too. Yeah, I've got a few. I don't have, I've got some little trailers. That I, I have, I, let me just say, hold on, right out. You're the JR, whatever the crew name that you guys have is blowing up this thing. <laughs> I can tell I, you. I can't. Okay, hold on. I got to hit the hand sanitizer. I can't hit the light button and the, uh, the add to broadcast fast enough. I, I'm, I'm telling you, our people are amazing. And, and like I said, they built this road, not us. I, this was not a direction we wanted to go. But they paved this road, and we follow what they lay down because you can see how they are. They're amazing. Uh, they back us at anything. And yeah. truly – Tell us facts. They'll tell you if something don't work. They'll yeah. say, look, you know, that's trash. Quit doing that. You know, and that's what we love about this. Yeah. So, but, yeah, okay. here is a, a five-incher, a uh, little larger. This is in-house built bait that we produced the mold on, as in this F40 I showed you earlier. Yep. We also have a trailer that's a three-inch uh, with a paddle tail. Um, this one is a uh, – what we call a tiller tad. We built this from the ground up, another in-house built bait. That's got to be um, awesome on a chatterbait. It, this thing is wicked nasty. Um, there's there's no way not to fish this. This just pays bills right here. It works. Uh, <laughs> it pays you, bills. You, you, well, you got to think about it. You know, you go on a tournament. I'm not a big tournament guy, um, but everybody is, say, throwing this watermelon red. Yeah. Right? Everybody out there on that tournament that day is throwing that watermelon red. So when you come in here with something that's a little bit different with watermelon red, you're going to change the game, you know, and that's just the, the aspect behind what we do. Uh, we know what works. It's worked for years, but we want to work better than the boat next to us to win that tournament. That's, you know, the, the mindset behind it. Uh, I mean, we produce a lot, a lot of regular, just traditional worms, you know, of all sorts, uh, from brush hogs to regular ribbon tails. Um, rages stingers any of that good stuff you know we, we do all that um but it's when you get that custom level you know when you when you break out something like this at a tournament yeah this it's fitting to change the, yeah the game is going another direction now so and that's the key behind custom but i can promise you a bag of these is not going to break you you know what i mean and that's yeah. the other key behind it i want you using something great and different but not be broke to do it and now you can buy everything on your website correct or how, do, how does one go now, out the, the best way to do it, and, and this has been crazy trying to figure out, but 
our Facebook has been amazing. It's been amazing since day one when the wife said you need to get on Facebook Live. It has <laughs> always been amazing. So we go by Facebook. I have a website, jrcustomlures.com. Yep. Um, you can go check out our videos, all kinds of cool stuff there. But there is no product to be bought there. Now, that seems weird, right? Well, we do live sales every other week. And we come on on a Sunday usually. We do a live sale of uh, all of our baits. Everything sells out. Well, why don't you produce more? I have. I've produced more. I've done all of our baits. I'm not boasting. I'm just factual statement. They all sell out. Nothing makes it to the website. So the best way is to follow us on Facebook. We come on here. We do lives. We do auctions. We do giveaways. I think last weekend we done like six giveaways. I mean, there's a great way to get our baits. Just follow us on Facebook. That's the best way. So okay, we so, don't do customs right now. Yeah. So so we have to give Miss Sherry a big thumbs up and congratulations yeah. for having the idea to get on Facebook for sure. Yes. How how tough was getting on? I mean, um, it's awkward to. I mean, I've been doing a radio this radio show for twelve years. We're not doing it in studio anymore right now, but. Uh, it's a little bit. I can keep up a conversation fairly well most in most cases. How awkward was it that first few uh, the first few live shows? Just out of curiosity, uh, 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 almost as awkward <laughs> as this interview following Rick. I mean, that's that's kind of a tough challenge, you know. Um, Dude, but, you're killing it uh, here. Well, I'm just saying it's factual. It, it's really awesome. It was a struggle. It took a. I hate to be a little kid, but it took a lot of. Oh, you got it, babe. You can do it. It took a lot of that. <laughs> Uh, and it still does today. Uh, you watch some of my lives. Sometimes I really break out on the limb and really have a good time. Um, other times I clam up. I try not to. It's just the nature and the beast. You don't like being on videos, and it's a struggle. You know, our people really create um, the environment we're in. You know, so when we go live, our people get like you see on here. I can't see comments now, um, but they really tear it all up. They yeah. make that live just worthy of everything. You will do whatever they say because it's fun. Everybody yeah. is having a blast, yeah. and that's what we like is smiles. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, no. I, I watched. I've watched a couple of them. I've been sharing them. I'll make sure I continue to share them. Uh, um, Thomas and I just Thomas and I had the best time because we were, of course, you're pouring. Oopsie, you're pouring one, and Thomas is going, "Daddy, ask him if he'll do a red head." a green and then yellow and i'm going i'm not asking him to do that and he's like no no miss sherry will say it for me i'm like i'm not asking just so you can hear your name on here uh she will. it's it's tough and we have i have a big screen i put up here when we're live so i can watch comments it is so hard to keep up with as many comments comes across our screen yeah Miss Sherry will stand over here and just holler stuff at me because I miss half of it. You know, I don't see it, but it's it's kind of fun watching that go through that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, wh when what days are the live so people know when they can get on there and get some of the lures? Also, you can get the crankbaits, the soft plastics, but also you might you might if you watch. I know the other day it was if you get to a certain level of viewers, then you have a giveaway. I heard. Yeah, we and we do that quite often, but we do a norm what I call normal live. Uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And these normal lives, they're they're meant for the, the range of people. If you're getting into bait making, give me a message. I can hook you up bait plastics and get you settled right away. If you're wanting to just see what we do, come on and watch. If you're ready to buy, come see how your baits are being built. Um, there's no better way to know the quality of your bait than to watch it being built live. Yeah. If you're willing to show any of your tricks and trade right here live, you back your product, I promise you. Yeah. Uh, we tr try to go live every other Sunday doing a live sale. Um, auctions just pop up out of the blue. There's no telling when. Same way as giveaways. Uh, when we have great nights, everybody's having a blast. Uh, we like to do giveaways. It just it, it, it's like payback. Y'all y'all made tonight's show great. Here, let's do this. You know, and, and that's what kind of puts the fun behind it. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy to have met you. I know we have. We're not going to say what we have, hopefully, in the works. It's, it's top secret right it's now. It's top. It's it is. It, it, exactly. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and, man, I, I need. we need to do this again soon because yeah, yeah. This, this was awesome. And I appreciate you posting it and all the people that are on here blowing this nope. thing up. I'm going to need a – I'm used to having a producer is the problem, and usually the producer right. would do a lot of the, the stuff I have to click on, and not right. having a producer sucks. Uh, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> but uh, – These people are amazing. Like I said, they, they back us all the time. I love them to death. They're great. Yeah. Well, they uh, – they, 
obviously you're you're making a quality product and you're doing something right because you have all these people who just love what you're doing what you miss sherry and your son are doing they love your 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 landscape photos your sunset photos they yeah. love your lures there, though, so. yeah get the just Can't kick them up just kick them up yeah i have a friend that does that and he always says i'm fishing and i'm like why would he send me this picture? I know for a fact he isn't fishing because why would you have your feet up? Also, I kind of think, think that maybe he has a foot fetish, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, but, you know, uh, anyway, guys, you, you need to watch. You'll, you're on tonight at 8 o'clock. Yes, well, that would be 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes. 8 o'clock Central Time. Yes. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to, he does a great job. You're, you'll enjoy every second of the whole thing and then also you, you know you can see miss sherry and you can see how he makes some of the best custom baits in the in the business to be honest there's there's a, a whole um there's a science behind making uh, a custom hand poured lure um, there, is. there the, it's it's a like a, a thing that's gone away in the industry mm -hmm. because Everybody gets sent everything overseas, and then what? What ends up? Yeah, what ends up happening? Okay, this I pour a lot of my baits. Yeah, I can't pour this one. I cannot. This is Miss Sherry, one hundred percent. I cannot pour this bait. I have made myself sick <laughs> trying to pour this bait. So when you say there's a science, I'm a bait maker. There is a science behind every bait poured. Why can't you make that one? Do you want me to send you one I make? <laughs> you won't fish it. You won't. I'll, I'll have to send you a Sherry backup. So you can actually test that product. So, is it is it just it's just so hard to put to pour? Or, it's it's difficult. These are fine lines. I yeah. can You see these hands? They don't go fine. So they go big. So, um, go big or go home. Exactly. You know. Uh, somebody asked on there. I didn't see the comment. They asked about this is a sherry cicada. Oh, okay. So this is some uh, you know the hand painting, but um, yeah, hand, hand pouring is um, yeah it's it's a bear. So definitely a bear. Well, everyone, go watch his show tonight, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Go to like their, fade, their page, JR Custom Baits and, and Lures, and on Facebook, and show them the, the love, show Miss Sherry the love, and, and support someone who is obviously giving back to the community just as much as anyone, and that's wonderful. So appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. We'll have to we'll continue to talk, obviously, because we yeah, have we our, gotta get our bait worked out. I mean, I think it's gonna be a big deal. Yeah, we have we have a special thing we're gonna do, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But I'll be watching tonight. Awesome. I, I think we're gonna have the launch here in a few minutes, so I'm gonna try to go outside and watch the launch, but tell yes, Miss thanks. Sherry and everybody that I said hello and keep up the great work, dude. I will do. I appreciate you having us on, sir. I, Let us know. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, man. All right. Later, Bye. man. Bye. Arguably the best show we've ever done. No doubt about it. That guy is a rock star. I'm not joking. I can't keep up with all your texts. I'm sorry. I should mention... Uh, we have a secret bait that he and I are working on. A secret bait. It's going to be a giveaway bait too. And not just one. Go join their, their Facebook page. Seriously. Go join them. Support that company. In all honesty, support that company. Uh, because that's, that's one of the good guys in, out here. And the good guys need to have love. So if you need some custom hand-poured baits, go check out Charlie and Miss Sherry and his son at JR Custom Baits and Lures. I'm not joking. That is, those guys kick ass. I'm going to I'm gonna be on there tonight. I'm going to buy a bunch of packs, and I will either, well, I'll probably use them. But I'll give away a couple myself. I'll buy a couple just to give it away to people out here. Okay, I'm going to try Mike Ortigo real fast. Yeah, go big or go home. Let me put that on there, Bruce. They have a YouTube channel too. Also, if you guys are watching, you should be following our YouTube channel. For the love of, love of God, the, the, the lawnmower man is here again twice in one week. What the sh... Can you guys hear that? 
I can hear it through my mu headphones. Okay, I'm going to try mic order to go real fast. I'm going to run a, a quick, oh, 12 minutes to launch. Okay, I'm going to run, run. You want to know what? I'm not going to call Mike this week. We'll call Mike next week because, well, you want to know? No, we should. I'm going to run a quick uh, thing, and I'm going to call Mike, and we'll see if we can get a hold of him. Hold on. Introducing Shimano DC Braking. Digital control will provide trouble-free casting to all anglers. DC will greatly improve the casting and therefore the fishing experience for anglers of all skill levels. Make long, accurate casts regardless of wind speed or direction. DC Brake provides trouble-free casting with a wide range of lures by simply adjusting the external dial. Even challenging casts are now within reach for all anglers. The newest innovation in braking systems, Shimano DC Brake. Better I hold it like that. There we go. Mike, how are you, man? What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? Hold on. I didn't What's I up, didn't buddy? bring I didn't bring you up. There you are. There he is. Let me unzoom you. Great show, man. Thank you, man. How are you doing? Can we show Good. Did you hear the news? We're going not like we didn't know this a long time ago. We're going to Texas next year. I saw that. Those dates match up to the dates we were talking about? No, a month apart. So we okay. have the end of that works. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Mike had a new. Can we show the new, the new little there it is, thing? The, fleet. the addition of the fleet. Yep, there it is. Oh my god, dude, the rocks look awesome. Oh, thanks. I haven't seen Let's the rocks. See if I can uh, I'll show it. Here you go. Excuse the mess around it, but we just had a big delivery of cardboard. There and is. I got to recycle, but there is the new there's fleet. the new addition. To the tackle webs fleet, that is awesome. Everyone says hello, hello by the way. What's up, peoples? And there's the project boat. There is the yeah. new keys boat, just because you know I'm addicted to boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also Mama saw wants a pool heater, daddy's getting boats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll be, we are coming to Texas next year for sure. We'll be at the Bassmaster Classic. We'll be held next year on, in Lake Fork on the Ray Roberts. Uh, so we're going to be, we'll be out there, but it should be a great time. They just, uh, they just, uh, announced it. Oh, they just announced that they're aboarding the, the SpaceX launch. That stinks. Pretty cloudy out here, but. So what? Oh, they're aborting it? No more? Yeah, no more. So, oh, well. so, uh. A big week for the 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 crew over there at Tackle Webs. I mean, you get the new boat. I mean, what was the the thought process behind that? You just said I needed this thing. <laughs> it's like a nice boat. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a nice boat we can use. Oh yeah, maybe leaving the keys and have it down there. We can run down there and use that boat. So now it needs to be webbed up and and uh, make some room for the project boat. But we're kind of snug in here now packed in here but between that the roundabout the john boat yeah we got the Minn Kota loaded up now you did you get the Minn Kota? how did that work so we'll see excited to see that work we gotta load up the batteries we're gonna hook up the batteries and we'll see how it works we'll that, see if i can run it that way that For is sure. that nothing is, i've seen says that you can <laughs> so it may be a flop but now let's try it uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Texas for the Classic? Do you like the idea of going to Texas for the Classic? Yeah, I do. I haven't been there for the Classic. I know they did it last time. What, a few years ago, right? I think this will be the first one. Houston or something? Yeah, that was Houston. Yeah. Well, I think we flew into Houston. No, I, don't I thought even... they did one. The first one we missed, was, I think, was in Texas. Oh, was it? it? I don't I don't remember them now. There's there's so many that There's melted. one in a baseball stadium where the weigh-ins were. Yeah. I can't remember which one it was. I think this will be the the Fort Worth. This will be hitting the spawn for that that type of fishing up there. End of March, we'll have good weather 
we won't have to worry about being freezing cold. This is a good thing for us. Yeah. <laughs> we won't have to uh, transfer there in Texas and, and then not get to Tulsa. So it's just one, hopefully a one-way flight in there. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. And there's I, big anglers over there, man. Salt, fresh water. Those guys love to fish in Texas. They're like, they're like our kinfolk over here in Florida, man. So. Yeah, yeah, it it should be. I think it'll be a good classic. I think it's a good place to go. Um, I think Texas deserves to have it. There's a, a great fishery over there, and also there's a lot of great. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that really, that really. I mean, there's ba the bass fishing. I think it's like the second or third biggest bass fishery in in the in the country. I think. Yeah, it's a big state and a lot of fishing. So a lot should of tag webs are sold that way too. So. Oh, that's Very even cool. That's even better. You, we had we had a, a, a giveaway for hats for people. Anybody that wanted a, a tackle webs hat, we had a giveaway this past weekend. Maybe we can do another one here in upcoming. Those are the new hats Mike has on right there. The white hat. How cool is that? Yeah. And yep. we got new hats in. We got some new products working. We got the new bags gonna be coming out soon. I have to put these. We'll have these out. This is the new bag. The waterproof bags. Do you Let have it? Show you. Oh, nice, dude. So it's all heavy PVC, rolls up, backpack. Oh, it's a backpack, right too. Onto things. Cup holder, little access or small pocket, Molly system. Those will be out soon. Nice. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. Nice little waterproof bag. Put You can put all kinds of stuff in it. Yeah, that's that's always good to have something like that when you go to the beach or you, you know you want you don't want your phone to get uh, completely soaked and more. I mean, that's it's really important to have one of those. Oh yeah, you stuff up. You can stuff four beach towels in that thing. Oh, that's awesome. We want to ride around. We get a little wet in this boat since it's a flat tunnel. Yeah, we can strap it up. We we can hang it on the t top and or on the leaning post. And but whenever we get to hang out on the islands, we could, or we stop running through the waves. You can pull out the towels; they're all dry. Everything's nice to go, ready to go. So, up oh, the little boys running in here to tell me what, Bubba? The rockets launching. They are canceled. It. Oh, I guess they're gonna launch the thing. All right. Well, let's go. Okay. Well, thank you for being on. We'll see you everybody next week. You yeah, know good show, man. Good show. I'll, I'll call you afterwards, dude. Get your fish on. Get your fish on later, guys. <laughs>